is the smallest component that we can break an element down into and it still retain the properties of that element. What I mean by this is if you have gold, you can only break it down so far before it's no longer gold. That's the atom. I like to use the idea of building blocks. If you have building blocks at home, you have children to play with building blocks, or you yourself play with building blocks, I'm not judging, you can build some pretty cool structures. You can build castles, you can build spaceships, all these really cool things with the building blocks. Ultimately, however, that structure, that castle, is made of individual blocks. If you take a hammer and smash that block, it's no longer a building block. It's subcomponents. That's what an atom is. The atom is the individual building block. Now we can go further down into the atom, which we're going to, but ultimately the atom is the smallest thing you can break something down into and it still be an element. Gold, helium, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, etc., etc. The atom is composed of three smaller components, subatomic components, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Yes, they can be broken down further, but this is not a chemistry course. We have the protons and the neutrons. The protons and the neutrons are found in the nucleus of the atom, the center area of the atom. The p -p 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 protons have a p -p 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 positive charge. The n -n -n neutrons have a neutral charge. The proton is what we name the atom. What I mean by this is that we have something called an atomic number. The atomic number is no more than the number of protons in the atom. The number of protons tells us what the atom is. So for example, if we have X number of protons, then it equals oxygen. If we have this many protons, it equals a carbon. If we have this many protons, we have a hydrogen. This many equals a helium. The number of protons tells us what the atom is called. The neutrons, for our purposes, are just there. They're filler. Now, if you're a chemistry teacher, please don't send me a hate letter. For anatomy and physiology, we really don't worry too much about the neutrons, they're just filler. Now, having said that, I just completed a course in uh, Seaburns, Chemical, Biological, Radiological, and Nuclear Weapons. Yes, fun times for Mr. Ford at graduate school, where we had to be very familiar with the neutrons. Well, why would I care about neutrons in a weapons of mass destruction course? Well, let's think, uh, nuclear weapons and radiological weapons. Why does that deal with neutrons? because the manipulation of neutrons is where we get the nuclear energy, the nuclear chemistry from. We have things called isotopes. Isotopes are variations of an atom based on the number of neutrons present. For example, uranium. One version of uranium, relatively harmless, relatively benign. Another type of uranium, kaboom, okay? So that's isotopes. That deals with neutrons, nuclear chemistry. We're not going there. The electrons are the other subatomic particle, and the electrons fly around the atom itself. They fly around the nucleus. Where they're at, we don't know. We can only predict where they're going to be. And those are the electrons, and they have a negative charge. So let's take a quick look at a summary here. Protons, p -p -p positive. In the nucleus, neutrons are neutral. In the nucleus, electrons are negative outside of the nucleus. Let's talk very briefly before we end this video on atoms, elements, and compounds. The atom is defined, like we said, as the smallest portion into which an element can be divided and still retain its properties. Molecules are a combination of atoms to make a substance. Elements are made of only a single type of atom. They may exist as molecules of single atoms, for example, oxygen, hydrogen, and gold. Compounds are a type of molecule made of two or more different types of elements. So for example, H2O, water, NaCl, uh, table salt, sodium chloride, um, CO2, carbon dioxide. How we read an element? Well, we just talked about what atomic number was. Atomic number is the number of protons in the atom. It tells us what the atom is. We have the mass number. The mass number is simple addition, simple addition. Mass number is your number of protons 
plus your number of neutrons equals your mass number. So if you wanted to find out the number of neutrons, you have a mass number, you have an atomic number, you take the mass number, move it up, take your atomic number, move it under, and subtract. And there you have your neutrons. Then we have the periodic table of elements. I am a big believer in not having to memorize a table of elements. And if you're a chemistry teacher out there, seriously, quit making students memorize this. It's available everywhere and over, you, over time. And with a lot of use, students will memorize this on their own. I have asked this question every semester, how many students memorize the table? And lots of hands go up. How many students remember the table? And the hands go back down. Okay, my soapbox, getting off of it. So that's the periodic table of elements. It tells us a lot, actually. It tells us the name of the element. It tells us the number of protons, depending on the version you have, that might have more information in it. It tells us what are alkalides, et cetera, et cetera. Again, if you're in a chemistry class, you'll become very familiar with that table. We're gonna keep moving on with lesson two. Right now, we're calling it a quits to the atom. We'll see you for the next video.